She explains that working from home gives you the benefit of wearing anything, but not dressing up and going to the office impacts your self-esteem and dulls your sex life. Am I reading this correctly? I feel like that's reaching. Am I the only one that feels like that's reaching? Are you guys tired of the corporate propaganda about why you need to get back to the office and how it's good for you and you're a lazy POS if you don't come back to the office? I'm not really tired of exposing it. Your boss is not wrong. Go back to the office. We have this homie. After allowing their employees to work from home for the last year, CEOs are asking their employees to show up to the office after Labor Day. Many CEOs have one message to their employees. Enough. I mean, they, they need their real estate value to, to stay up or go back up. CEO of Squarefoot told his staff, I believe that work is better when most of the people are in the office most of the time together. Everyone else has to be there except for the CEO, right? He's got his either his own private office or he doesn't have to come in. Because it's his company and he can do what he wants, right? Do what I, I say, not as I do. Are CEOs making the right decision by asking employees to come back to the office? It's not really an ask. It's more like manipulation, like Google. Like Google pay cuts were just enacted for people that want to work remote. Like you get paid based on your location, not your value that you're bringing to the organization. Like, Anyways, the office as a battlefield. For the last 10 years working from homes, advocates have done a great job painting working from home as a pain to employees and a pleasure to employers. So employees became resistant to the idea of going to the office. It, it, it is a pain to employees, let's, let's be honest, especially when you don't need to be there. Here's the solution. Let people choose what they want to do. Not hard, choice. If people want to go in, they go in. If people want to stay at home, they stay at home. There should be no repercussions either way. The problem with the war against the office is that it projects the office as a battlefield between employers and employees. No, it doesn't. That's not the problem with the office at all. There's so many other issues. I've, I've said these things a thousand times, but you got like the commute, you got daycare you got to take care of. Uh, I mean, you, you got to deal with people in the office like microwaving smelly food. You got to deal with the dudes interrupting you, people looking over your shoulder, gossip, water cooler talk, all this other stuff that you can simply avoid and just keep working instead. When employees view the office as a war zone, it is natural for employees to resist the idea of showing up to work. So I feel like this is some sort of logical fallacy. I, I, I don't know the name of it, but he's like setting up a, an argument that didn't even exist to be able to present his point. So employers have a tough job convincing employees to go back to the office, and I think you can gain a competitive advantage over your coworkers if you decide to show to the office more often. Yeah, it's called corporate simping, right? If you go there and you buddy buddy and brown nose with your boss, and he's gonna notice you more and see you more because he has no choice because you're physically there with him, then yeah, you might get treated better, which shouldn't happen, but that's, I mean, he's not wrong, but it's still stupid. It's not about productivity. Most people defend work from home with one statement. I can be more productive at home. What if working from the office wasn't about productivity? Ah, oh, that's really what it comes down about. That's the actual truth in this article. Working from the office is not about productivity. It's not about results. It's about talking and gossip and a bunch of other things that are unwork related. People don't wanna go. They'd rather just do their work and then do the things that they enjoy rather than get pulled into some conversation they have no interest in, but they have to because it'd be socially awkward to be like, oh, leave me alone, I'm working. Stop using an economic formula to solve office versus home problem. It is a sociological issue and not a purely economic issue. The office provides you with a safe place where you can socialize with your coworker. God, this, this sounds really kind of scary. A safe place. Nah, do people get harassed at work all the time, sometimes even more at the office? I know you can do that virtually, but it is a lot harder to be vulnerable when you haven't met people face to face. These people have probably never, ever played online video games. We're not talking about distributing complex information to each other. He's talking about it's harder to be vulnerable online. For some people, it's actually easier because you don't have to be there in person where they can see all your mannerisms and if you're crying, or you're getting upset, or like it's a lot easier for people to be anonymous and be vulnerable online than it is you know, in, in person. Going to the office gives you a needed mental break from your daily routine. No, you just change the routine to make the office your new daily routine. According to a psychologist, Romani whatever, working from home can negatively impact your relationship with your family. I feel like that's BS. So step out of the house and head to your office or, or, or step out of the house and go literally anywhere else that has internet so you can do your job. Dr. Whatever added by coining the term the sweatpants paradox to warn employees about the disadvantage of working from home. How much did they pay you, Dr. She explains that working from home gives you the benefit of wearing anything, but not dressing up and going to the office impacts your self-esteem and dulls your sex life. Am I reading this correctly? I feel like that's reaching. Am I the only one that feels like that's reaching? Now that I have your full attention, stop looking at going to the office as a benefit to your employee. Is there a downvote button? We got claps, we got, who fucking clapped this? 2.3 thousand claps agree with this. Young employees lose the most. I established my professional credibility and I earn the respect of my colleagues by connecting with them face to face. I mean, honestly, you should earn their respect by being responsive, completing your work on time, 
asking questions when you have them and not waiting to the last second and then like what happened and you drop the ball always showing that you're trying to learn like that's how you that's how you earn respect had i worked remotely 100 percent of the time I would have lost the thousands of network lunches I attended in the last 15 years and the benefit of exchanging small talks with my coworkers around the water cooler. Raise your hand if you think it's a benefit to have small talk around the uh, water cooler. I don't. There's zero benefit because most of the time what you're talking about at the water cooler is unrelated to work, thus you are wasting time. David Solomon, I've already made a video on this guy. He says, remote doesn't work for young people. That's his quote, go Google it if you want. The chief executive officer realizes this hidden benefit of going to the office. I don't want another class of young people arriving remotely that aren't getting more direct contact, direct apprenticeship, direct mentorship. Oh, this feels like a cop out. As a young employee, you need as much mentorship and apprenticeship as possible. Go to the office. No. Get your ass to the office, okay? You're missing out on those water cooler talks and you're missing out on all the network lunches that you can have because your job is your life, so okay? We own you. We're your family. We appreciate you, by the way. Employers can't reward what they can't see. When it comes to your value to the marketplace, you have to be visible. You don't think visibility is important? Ask Kim Kardashian. These are, t these are apples and oranges, bro. We know from research that work from home increases productivity by 13%, but we also know that this in increased productivity isn't always rewarded. Okay, so increased productivity at the office isn't rewarded either. I mean, sometimes it is. You're rewarded with more work and overtime. You have to be visible to your supervisors and your customers. No, see, that's not. It's your supervisor's job to make sure the quality of the work that you're producing is where it needs to be. And if you need anything to help you achieve those results, it's you don't need to be visible. Okay, this is, you have some um, object permanence issues. Going to the office helps young employees to be seen and recognized. In addition, it allows them to interact with their supervisors, which improves their chances of moving up and earning more money. Ah, the truth. It is not what you know. It is not the results. It is not the productivity. It is who you blow. It is who you take to golf um, Saturday morning. And then take him out to lunch and talk about how great he is and ask about his friends and family and so that you can basically brown nose. More hidden benefits. They're not very hidden. Art Markman mentions three benefits that can help employees come to the office, culture, collaboration, and purpose. It is hard for new employees to learn the culture of their companies remotely. Here's the thing, right? People aren't really interested in culture most of the time. Culture is just a bunch of fluff to make it seem like companies have values that you have to follow, but they don't. Moreover, it deprives young employees of interacting and learning from more experienced staff. No, it doesn't. Get on a Zoom call. Collaboration is not only about getting things done. It's about transferring knowledge from one employee to another. Email. When people work remotely, the focus becomes getting the job done and not sharing knowledge. This is, you got citations. Can you source this? This is stupid. <laughs> Going to the office reinforces the sense of belonging to your team and makes your job more enjoyable. I, I mean, no, this is all false. You need to stop looking at your job as a paycheck. I'm glad that that you've reached the level of corporate simping where you believe that your job is your life and who you are and you completely identify with your job, with your role, with your powers given to you by some other guy that created a company and gave himself power and then transferred some to you like it matters. Your job serves as a bigger purpose and it has a symbolic value. Now you're trying to make a job more than what it is. This is what it is, a paycheck right here. Who listens to this? At a regular just old corporate job where you're just kind of doing the daily grind to get your paycheck, it doesn't, it's not your purpose in life. Most of the time I'd say people's bigger purposes in life are things that cost them money, not things that make them money. Let's, let's be honest, the things that you enjoy, things that you really want to do, usually take your money, not make you money. It connects you with the world and exposes you to different people with different backgrounds. Bro, the internet. <laughs> MBA. Oh, okay, so we got it. All right, he has an MBA, so he thinks what he's saying actually matters. Uh, oh, so he works for the government. A uh, founder of Lead with Integrity. Except for the fact that he tells you to go to work so that you can move up by getting to know people and brown nosing and not by the results, not by the merit of you working hard and producing results to get that promotion. That doesn't sound like integrity to me. How are you a leader, a founder with integrity? Forcing people to work full time from an office is a recipe for disaster and it will create a pool of unhappy employees. Employers have to create a hybrid approach so they can attract and retain Great employees. I mean, just let people choose. You don't need to make a giant system saying everyone has to come in on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Just let people pick. Help employees to be more productive at home. Train employees to work from home by providing them with the tools. But you said none of this matters. Be clear about your performance metrics. But it doesn't matter. The performance doesn't matter. That's not why you're saying to go to the office. Your boss is not wrong. Go back to the office and earn more money. This has, these two don't relate. Going to the office doesn't mean you're gonna make more money. Going to the office doesn't mean you're gonna get a promotion. Going to the office doesn't mean jack shit unless you need to be there to work on something physical and you can't do your job over the internet. If you can do your job on the internet and everything is secure, 
and you're fine and you can do most of the job yourself and you don't have to you know, communicate with other people, then you don't need to go to the office and that shouldn't reflect on your ability to, to make money. Whatever, dude. Uh, this is stupid. Let's look at the comments, see what some other people are saying. Sherry says, uh, quoting him, you need to stop looking at your job as a paycheck. LOL, no, my job is a paycheck, and when you try to convince me it's something more, I wonder about your motivations. Well, since he says not going into the office dulls your sex life, I guess he looks to the workplace to fill non-related needs too. <laughs> Homie over there doing all the one-on-ones with all the bosses, or maybe just one. I don't know what he's into. What's missing in your life that your job provides you with all these things you aren't getting elsewhere? Yep, I swear job worshippers are a freaking cult in America. They're called corporate simps, Rachel, and just FYI, if you'd like to note that vernacular down. Last I checked, businesses were in business to make more money. More productive workers make more money for the company. Checkmate, Lue. Not dressing up and going to the office impacts your self-esteem and dulls your sex life. Is this comment aimed at women? If so, it's incredibly sexist. Even if it's aimed at men, it's still incredibly sexist. How many of you non-redundant boomer middle managers got together to write this article? <laughs> Going to the office gives you a, a needed mental break from your daily routine, but who are you to say that someone else needs a mental break? I, okay, so I think what we can gather here is that I think he has one post or one article about podcasts he listens to that made him smarter. Entre Leadership Podcast. Ah, read this story with a free account. No thanks, I'm not going to waste my time. Anyways, uh, this article is unbelievably ignorant, short-sighted, and overall um, a joke to people that want to work from home. How people like this get anywhere, I mean, I guess it's obvious, right? I mean, he knows the true secret. It's not what you know, it's who you blow. So anyways, that's all I got. Share this around so more people can see this ignorance. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, click like, subscribe if you want to see more, and leave a comment to let me know what you think. We have to keep calling this nonsense out because they're going to keep finding up BS reasons why you should go back to the office when you don't need to be there. But again, it's their company and they can do what they want and this is the reality of the corporate world. However, you should still put your foot down from time to time if you know that you're not gonna lose your job at least. That's all I got. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.